the Bhagavat Purana, also known as the Srimad Bhagavatam, is one of the major texts in Hinduism that contains stories and teachings related to various aspects of life, including the concept of yugas. And in the Bhagavat Purana, there are descriptions of the four yugas and their characteristics. So, yugas explain cycles the earth is moving through. So, according to yugas, the earth is moving through four major cycles. And when the last one completes, the first one will begin once again. And then between one cycle and another, there are transitions that are usually moving or start happening through signs of decline and crisis. Then there's a phase of purification. Then there's a phase of a new awakening or usually described as a spiritual awakening. Then there's a phase of transition and chaos. After transition and chaos, there comes rebirth and renewal. And that leads into a new golden age. And that is something that also Mayan people were predicted about the fifth world or the golden age. And from astrological perspective, the earth is moving through zodiac cycles. One zodiac cycle takes about 2160 years. And each zodiac is made out of 30 degrees and each degree takes us about 72 years. So when the earth is moving through cycles, it reminds us that every time we start transitioning to a new age, the way we used to live before is over because we are ready for something new. So when it comes to yugas, then the first yuga is Satya Yuga. It's um, known as the Great Age, the Age of Truth and Virtue. Usually in that uh, yuga, people are spiritually evolved and righteousness prevails. Human lifespans are long and there is harmony between humans and nature. And this is the yuga we are entering. According to the work of Rudolf Steiner, he said that the Kali Yuga, which is the Dark Age, has ended around the year 1890-90. And it's actually interesting because this was the time when Nikola Tesla was in, uh, really active, Albert Einstein was active, Rudolf Steiner was active, Vincent van Gogh was active, Oscar Wilde was active, and so on. So many great minds were working at that time that he described as the end of the Kali Yuga. So Kali Yuga is the dark age. This is the age of darkness and ignorance. Uh, virtue is greatly reduced and people are easily influenced by greed, lust and other negative qualities. Spiritual practices are quite minimal and social values have completely lost its core. So we can notice that during this time of, let's say, 1850s and 18, 1890s, there was a great uh, degradation of uh, social virtues, uh, spiritual virtues, spiritual connection, connection with nature. But after this year, after, you know, at the beginning of 90s, we can start to see some evolution in the field of technology, in the field of energy, also in the field of spirituality. More and more texts started coming out. And then there was a year of 2000, right? A year of great awakening. Dolores Cannon came out with an incredible work that initiated a whole new level of understanding and knowledge through her work and 2012 happened a time of the ending of Mayan's calendar which also can be described of an end of 
an age or an end of the fourth world as it was described in Mayan's teachings. So we are in this um, huge transition right now. Also according to astrology, the age of Pisces has started around 2160 years ago. And as I mentioned, each zodiac cycle takes around 2160 years ago. So right now we are transitioning into the age of Aquarius. And if one degree of a zodiac takes us around 72 years, it means that the transition is not something that happens overnight. It's a transition of a generation. We are a generation that is entering into a golden age, setting up pillars for the next generations, pre preparing virtues, preparing a good lifestyle, preparing healthier patterns for the next generations, for anyone who's doing the work. So the four yugas, according to ancient Indian texts, are the first one is Satya Yuga, the second one is Treta Yuga, the third one is Dvapara Yuga, and the fourth one is Kali Yuga. So all ancient traditions explains that uh, time is not linear, it's actually cyclical. It's moving through cycles, and each cycle signifies certain important events. And the most incredible transition that happens as we are moving through time is the transition between Kali Yuga and Satya Yuga, because we are beginning a whole new cycle. We're going from the Dark Age to the Golden Age. And according to ancient texts, it was explained that the Satya Yuga, which is a an age of a spiritual awakening, an age of uh, a life of virtue, a life of connection, a life of, of a healthy living, doesn't happen by itself. It happens by individuals initiating it into life. So what does it mean? It means that firstly, there needs to be a birth of knowledge or there needs to be a discovery of ancient knowledge. And if we look around ourselves, we can notice that there was never more knowledge present than right at this time. More knowledge about ancient wisdom, about ancient technologies, about ancient spirituality, about science that is bridging those ancient spiritual teachings with modern discoveries, science behind meditation, science behind neuroplasticity, the ability to, to form our brain according to new adopted knowledge and changing our behaviors. There's a lot of science that uh, explains why energy work can, be, can have healing effects, something that our great ancient ancestors we're talking about. So life as we know is over because there's something new that is that is taking place right now. But we have to flow with the changes, right? As I mentioned, there are few chapters that happens or take place during this huge transition. As the first one is decline or crisis. We've seen that, right? We've experienced that. In many prophecies and belief systems, there is often a period of decline, crisis, and upheaval in the old order. And usually we see it in social life, in political life, in in financial life, in spiritual challenges, and so on. And we see this is happening right now. We, like, there were never so many, like, we could say weird things that are happening as they are happening right now. But then it leads us into purification, into recognizing, okay, this doesn't work, let's ditch it. Let's let go of it. And let's embody what actually works. Let's... For each individual, it's a, a point of decision, like, this is what I want to do more of. This is what truly makes me feel alive. This is what kind of relationships are not working for me. 
this is what kind of lifestyle is not working for me this is what was maybe advertised to me but it's it clearly doesn't work so an individual starts a whole purification journey when he or she decides what he or she actually wants to do on that heart level on on the level that can be beneficial for health in the body clarity in the mind and peace in the heart right this is the stage of purification and obviously this stage leads us into awakening and enlightenment which is often also a theme in many transformation narratives and many stories from ancient ancestors that humanity will come back across realization that we're all connected on the web of life like native americans said and suddenly we recognize that we have to awaken our senses we have to come back to our senses and recognize that we're all one that we're all an extension of the source so let's act like it let's think like it and let's find out how to collaborate right how to cooperate so we can actually build healthier lives here on this wonderful planet and because of this awakening it leads us into transition and chaos the old world needs to fall apart so the new one can give birth right the old system needs to fall apart so the new one can take place and that's what is happening right now financial systems are falling apart many healthcare systems are falling apart because they were unsustainable energy systems are falling apart because they are unsustainable and so on but at the same time we are finding new discoveries and many great people many great minds are coming out with incredible ideas and as i said this is a transition of generation if we become conscious during this time we can create really really incredible results so the reminder here is to really pay attention to what may be your part at this process what is your part and don't think it's small or big or whatever just ask yourself maybe your part is just healing your family wounds maybe your part is uh, restructuring your patterns when it comes to your social skills when it comes to the way you express yourself when it comes to a level of kindness a level of compassion a level of integrity or or certain values that you're building once again that were lacking in your family tree maybe and this is already a huge part because those who will walk after you will have something to learn from you that maybe you couldn't learn from your parents and this is already a huge part so each of us may awaken to a realization okay this is what i have to do and i just want to remind you to recognize what may be that your thing that is awakening right now within you many people are going through what we call a spiritual awakening during this time recognizing that there's more to life recognizing that i actually have a purpose here i actually have been through many challenges not because life was punishing me but because life was preparing me to live a life of service to live a life of purpose and maybe just maybe this is my time right and like i said those chapters of decline and crisis purification awakening transition and chaos rebirth and renewal until we enter the golden age it's happening on a global level but it's also happening in a personal on a personal level we experience a decline we experience a deep sadness usually we go through a depression depression the dark night of the soul but then we recognize okay i have to purify my life i have to purify my mind i have to stop with constant distraction i have to stop with this um rat race right constantly chasing something i will never get or even when i get it i spend it and i start ch chasing it once again it's not sustainable so it's time to purify our lives and start a new lifestyle right and it leads us into a whole new awakening so recognize that this whole process of cycles is happening the same within you 
as it is happening outside of you. In other words, actually, because we've started that inner transformation, this transformation started happening outside of us as well. So even though nobody can truly, truly tell us when Kali Yuga ends, they're just um, theories and speculations, we can see that something huge is happening on the world. As Native Americans also predicted, when the Earth will go into transition period, there will be great changes on the world. There, there will be changes in the weather and we see it. We see it in floods happening all over the world, fires happening all over the world, earthquakes are happening all over the world. We see then in in uh, social life like people are going through a crisis through identity crisis through all kinds of crisis financial crisis are happening the fall of the old financial system as it was too corrupted unsustainable into a new system that uh, may be more sustainable and we'll see what will come out of it but um, if it is built on consciousness and the values that are connecting all of us together, I'm sure it can give a birth to something incredible. But it's up on us to fully recognize to what we want to say yes to and to what we want to say no to, because this is our power. Our power is to come together and to recognize that it's over. I don't want to live my life this way anymore. And I don't want to support these belief systems anymore because truly what are beliefs but stories we've told to ourselves for such a long time that we've started believing them even though they may not be true, even though they may not be helpful for us anymore. And if we look for something for a long time, we truly start believing it's whatever story, whatever was presented to us. And our job right now is to purify ourselves and to recognize what knowledge can serve us and what is outdated, right? And this is a journey for each individual. So my job as a messenger is to remind you to look within and to recognize what is awakening right at this time for you. And what may be your part at improving your life so you can become an example in society for what is a healthy way of living? Because we are all here a work in, in progress, right? Uh, but at the same time, a work in process that is moving through cycles that are kind of unfamiliar until we acquire a greater knowledge that reminds us of our true power and of the meaning why we are here at this such a unique time and what this time is truly teaching us because each of us is here on purpose each of us is here with a great reason and the reason is that within you there's something unique you can bring to this society to this planet at this unique time, only you can do it. Nobody else but you can do it. But you have to discover it. You have to be brave enough and courageous enough to let go of limiting stories that are telling you that you're weak, that you're unworthy, that you're not good enough, that you're a bad person, that you are whatever you've been told and to embody your inner truth, whatever truth resonates with you to embody your own virtues that can help you to live or to have integrity towards them, like virtue of justice, virtue of moderation, virtue of wisdom, virtue of anything that may help you to live a good life, to live a life of meaning. So study yourself, study the past, study anything that can help you to empower yourself. I found great power in philosophy. I found great power in spirituality, but also in science, in neuroscience, for example. I've recognized how my brain works. So I've learned to 
organize my life the way that it can actually work for me, that I can actually wake up inspired to do something great today, to be creative, to be in flow state. And the science of biology and epigenetics can tell you that actually you're not just yourself right now, you're carrying within your DNA a wisdom of your ancestors something I've shared with you yesterday. So remind yourself of your power. Acknowledge yourself because you're the leader of this time. You're the teacher. You're the healer. You're the mystic. You're the guru. You're whatever, however you want to call yourself. You are the one you've been waiting for. So wake up, my friend. I hope you found something valuable today. I hope you've enjoyed in today's painting as well. The Spirit of a Lion, my latest painting. I hope you've enjoyed it. To anyone who would love to support my art, you can find it in our Etsy store. I draw my passion. The link is in the description of this video. Thank you so much. And my friends, I love you all. I'm sending you all lots of love, blessings, and power. Stay beautiful. And till next time, one love.